Hello and welcome to the item Rusala update poll talk. The poll talk is today at Varanasi. The constituency of Prime Minister Narendra Modi from where he is consisting for the third time. And of course we have been travelling across Uttar Pradesh covering elections and there is another writer and political activist who once occupied a very important position in the Atal Bihari Vajpayee government BJP government he was in the office of then deputy prime minister Lal Krishna Adwani as an advisor political advisor as an editorial advisor uh, as a kind of coordinator Sudhendra Tulkarni Sudhendra ji welcome to the idam risala update poll talk of course you have been with us earlier also uh, but then you have been traveling over the last few days and looking at the and you also wrote a very very interesting piece uh, on certain aspects of narendra modi's campaign you qualified it as egregious lies and which are turning into self votes for him i mean especially you, you referred to the ambani abba reference and you wondered in that article one doesn't know what prompted him to score this self goal do you have any answers now i mean is it refer you know first of all yeah. i am uh, happy once again yeah. to be joining you on idem i appreciate the initiative taken by journalists themselves to create an independent non partisan platform digital platform we need more and more such initiative absolutely and uh, strongly defend media freedom freedom of expression and freedom of thought which are at the core of democracy 2024 election is first and foremost about defense of democracy which is under threat and uh, i hope that the people of india collectively produce uh, an outcome that goes a long distance in defending democracy now coming to your question i recently wrote an article in the quint focusing on the lies of prime minister modi you know it is quite common in politics especially in election politics for people to exaggerate and in exaggerating they make claims that are not uh, quite uh, truthful about what they stand for and they make claims to negate the other what the others stand for you know in a contest in a political contest to some degree this is understandable but to speak out right lies and that too it such lies coming from the prime minister who holds the highest office in the largest democracy in the world is a matter of deep concern so we have seen in the past uh, more than a month the nearly three months of election campaign that the prime minister has resorted to false hopes again and again and again uh, irrespective of whether you support this party or that party you expect important politicians holding important offices to stand by the core values of the constitution to stand by the motto of the republic the motto of the republic is what satya meva jaya re truth shall prevail hmm? it should not turn into asatya meva jaya re so this is what i highlighted in my article i gave several instances and i felt that uh, the people do not get swayed by the speechers the propaganda and make an objective evaluation of what different parties stand for and what especially the prime minister stands for because as you said he is now seeking the third term he yeah and after ten years the candidate as you know said the for the ruling party for the office of prime minister again because this part this election is being fought 
entirely in the name of Narendra Modi. Yeah. Never has any election, parliamentary election, been personalized to the extent yeah. that it has been now. Therefore, one expects that the Prime Minister seeks a new mandate on the basis of his record, what he has done and what he seeks to do in future, rather than going into falsehood after falsehood. Yeah, but what we have seen in this campaign this time, a very significant twist has taken place after the past two phases of polling. See, the BJP and the NDA campaign initially started with this slogan, worthy to guarantee. But then, after the very first round of polling, when the signals from the ground came that, you know, that the BJP may not be doing as good as it expected to be, immediately you heard the speech about Mangal Sutra and the Muslims being given a larger suffering by, by uh, taking it away from the Hindu communities. And, I mean, it's, it's, uh, communism has always been a big group to subject for the BJP and the Santari War for a very long time. But uh, this has actually kind of, you know, uh, broke all limits as the kind of campaign that, you know, that especially um, as it comes from uh, the, the Prime Minister. What do you think, that you have already spoken about the lies, but, you know, what do you think are the reasons for this? This, this shifting of years. No, one small correction, if I may. It is not that uh, the BJP has always resorted to this kind of politics or even divisive politics. Right. Because I had the privilege of working closely with Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee when last Krishna Advani was the Deputy Prime Minister. And in those six years, the BJP under Vajpayee made sincere efforts to integrate the nation. They did not resort to any divisive communal politics. What we are seeing now is a completely different kind of BJP. I've been in the BJP for 16 round years. I quit the BJP before Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister. What we are seeing is not just politics of communalism, of a more most blatant kind, but also politics of lies. Let's give you some examples. You know, I was in Gujarat. When uh, the Prime Minister addressed a rally in Banas Kanta, I was sitting with a friend of mine who owns a television channel, which is actually for, for BJP. Okay. And we were seeing on the screen the Prime Minister's speech, where he said in Gujarati, of course, he said, if the Congress has a policy now to take all the resources away from one community to and give it to another community. So, if you have a house of four rooms, for example, two rooms will be taken away. <laughs> and then we went to the extent of saying, if you have two nice, one nice will be taken away. Yeah. So, I asked this friend of mine, yeah. uh. what kind of nonsense is this? Is this what he's saying? Because I could not, you know, fully decipher what he was saying in uh, Gujarati, even though I know, know a little bit of Gujarati. So he translated it for me and he said, this is what he said. My friend replied, no, this is not uh, uncommon in Gujarati, yeah. in Gujarat. Yeah. Uh, when he was the chief minister of Gujarat, it was quite common for him to speak such uh, language. Oh. Now, this is not an isolated instance. If you, if you go back to 2019, sure. the Prime Minister made a similar communal observation during an election campaign, referring to Muslims as a community which can be identified by the, clor yeah. by the clothes they wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was in 2019, you can say just a, a one-off comment yeah. of the flag. Yeah, yeah. But this year, 2024, you are seeing very wicked series of and more and more such irrational, outrageous, outlandish comments by the Prime Minister. You mentioned Mangal Sutra. In Rajasthan, he gives a speech where he says, your, your Mangal Sutra will be snatched away. Hmm? You know, I, I have, I've talked to even BJP supporters hmm. and RSS supporters. Who don't, who don't like this? Because no Prime Minister and for that matter, not, not even uh, common politicians talk like this, right? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, this election has actually descended into uh, a propaganda full of lies. So, you've been traveling 
and uh, what are the signals? I mean, in fact, you know, there is a string of opinion which thinks, which, which feels that, you know, that the Prime Minister and this Deputy Home Minister, they have resorted to this type of language and this type of propaganda, essentially because the writing on the wall is against them. Are you seeing something similar with your travels? You have traveled, I know that you're from, you're based in Maharashtra, you've traveled in Uttar Pradesh, you have traveled, uh, you're planning to go to Bihar now. So, what, are, what is it that you're seeing on the ground? See, generally, yeah, uh, a political leader, and especially one who, are, who is occupying a very important office, would not talk like this unless there is a degree of frustration and desperation. Let me give one more example like, of the kind of uh, outrageous speeches the Prime Minister has been giving. He said that the Congress did not vote for Trump. President Draupadi Murmu in the presidential election because of the color of her skin. I would huh? mm. Now, of course, the pretext to that was San Petro's, San Petro's uh, statement uncalled for totally. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't behold the Prime Minister to bring the President of India into an election campaign and make a statement like this. So, what it, if you add up all these together, it means that uh, they have moved far away from their original mm, you know, focus of the campaign, that were Modi guarantee. If you read the election manifesto, which itself was called Modi Ki guarantee, you know, it was lots of, you may, you may debate, but the focus there was on development, on people's welfare. If they had stuck to that, it would have been a different matter. But soon after the first phase was over, they have, we're not talking about their guarantees, we're not talking about the track record, they're constantly harping on the Congress. So, yeah. in, in fact, we are reacting to the Congress manifesto, yeah. we have made the Congress manifesto more popular. Hmm? So, I see, you know, I've traveled in Karnataka, who? Maharashtra, Gujarat, now UP. I see that uh, this is a very closely con contested election. The arrogance that marked Akkivar Chasifar left through the year. And we said that the BJP alone will win 370 seats. We are not repeating it now. Even they themselves are not repeating. So, what does it show? That the election is now becoming a contest. Right. right. Now we don't know where it will, where the the falling graph of the BJP will stop. That we'll know only when we four. But I agree with you that this is a, a clearly contested election. But as you pointed out, the, one of the things, you know, if you look at the 2014 and 2019 election, can compare is what's happening now. See, in both those general elections, the narrative was set by the BJP, especially by Narendra Modi, and the opposition parties were responding to it. But for a change, we are seeing that the Congress manifesto has become one of the central points of this election. Uh, how do you look at uh, a phenomenon like that in terms of uh, political analysis as a political observer? See, it's, it's good that we see 2024 in the context of what happened in 2014 and 19. Yes. 2014 was a landmark election where there was a positive mandate from Modi and a mandate against UTA. Yeah. People expected, people wanted change, and they saw change in the form of Narendra Modi. So, for the first time, the BJP got a majority on its own. Five years later, not that they were completely happy with the performance of the Modi government, but something unexpected happened. Mm. So, Rana, Balakot, mm. and uh, the whole mood of the nation changed. The beneficiary was the BJP, which in fact increased the tally. Red. The opposition was reacting to the BJP's agenda or what the BJP wanted the nation to think of. This time it's the other way around. You have rightly observed that uh, the Congress has mounted a very spirited campaign. It began actually not with the campaign itself. I give a great deal of credit to Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Yatra. 
you know, some men, a congressman himself in UP mentioned to me that had that uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra not happened, the Congress would have been decimated. It is the Bharat Jodo Yatra and the bold initiative taken by Rahul Gandhi which enlivened the party. The party. And thereafter, of course, you know, the, the image of Rahul Gandhi has changed. People are now taking him seriously. Even his critics are taking him seriously. Added to this is a very positive, by and large, a very positive manifesto, which focused on the people's welfare. And of course, there was a certain degree of, uh, uh, in a repetition, or a, sex, a repetition of the success they found in Karnataka, guarantees. Hmm? You've traveled in Karnataka. Oh, yeah. I swear that, uh, you know, these, uh, is very fair, Promises which have been implemented to some extent yeah. are paying dividends. So they have now magnified it to the national level. But most importantly, the Congress campaign has focused on unemployment amongst the youth and the Congress campaign has focused on price rise. On birth funds, 10 years of the Modi government is an absolute failure. failure. And which is why the BWP is on the back foot. And Constantly, in, in speech after speech after speech, Narendra Modi is hitting back at Rahul, calling him Shahjada. But the people don't see that image of Rahul Gandhi 10 years ago is what they are seeing today. He was different Rahul Gandhi. And similarly, the image of Narendra Modi is not what it was 10 years ago. There is bad and expectation absolutely that surrounded Narendra Modi. Today, it's not so. Hmm? So, you see a Prime Minister who is somewhat nervous, the energy levels have fallen down, and in, you know, we are sitting in Varanasi, he had a road show, and I have heard from several people that this road show was very pale in comparison to what we had in 18 and 19. If this is happening in Prime Minister of own constituency, you can imagine what the mood of the nation may, what the mood of the people in Uttar Pradesh is. So, uh, there is a very a big contrast between the BJP's confidence and aggressiveness in 2014 and 19 and BJP's defensiveness in 2024. Well, yesterday, in one of his speeches, where again he referred to the in the India Alliance and Congress. He, Narendra Modi said that, you know, that they are planning a, a, a structure where uh, they will have one Prime Minister for each year and five Prime Ministers. Uh, how do you look at a uh, 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 kind of projection like that? And you talked about Rahul Gandhi emerging, uh, you know, changing his image and kind of... Do you think that he has now become Prime Minister material? You see, if there, you know, we must objectively look at uh, the, the poll situation today. And there is certainly one strong point the BJP has on which the India Alliance and the Congress stand on a weak project. And that is the question of stability. For the BJP, there is an unquestioned leader. And who is projected as an ex prime minister again? The people of India expect stability. Stability has always played an important role in the collective consciousness of the Indian people when they vote for a government in a parliamentary election. The India alliance has not been very cohesive, nor an alliance that has projected a leader to be its uh, future prime minister. This is certainly a weakness on the part of the India alliance. Right. So we have to see to what extent this plays a role in the current election. I believe that uh, on this particular plank, the BJP will score. And that's an important plank, yeah. there's no doubt about and it. Rahul Gandhi has not been projected as uh, the plank. No, but do, you, do you personally think that he has, his development has got into a stage where he can be accepted as a Prime Minister? It has not happened in this election. He has certainly risen in the in the collective uh, mind of the people of India, including his critics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, sometimes, in my opinion, uh, he makes mistakes. 
one such mistake in my opinion is when he you know he supported this concept of jitni abadi utna haraf thi that is you will right notice of yes. yeah. rights on the on the basis of the population of population of population of different castes and subcastes yeah this i believe is an unconstitutional concept mm. it is a divisive concept mm. and it is not it cannot be implemented either rahul gandhi should have while i am all for affirmative action mm. i am all for very strong effective measures that uh, promote equality equality of opportunities and reducing the stark inequalities and disparities that we see today the aspirations of people of the marginalized community scheduled caste scheduled tribes the most backward uh, oh, we see minorities the most backward among my not all minorities. minorities yeah we, are, we again make a yeah. mistake yeah yeah we club minorities with scs and no, no, that's a wrong thing right, right because our six a my you know a backward community a christians a backward community the parsis are they a backward community well, well, no and for that matter uh, are all muslim no no backward, large section so therefore we must never make the mistake yeah. of saying all we all, all, all minorities yeah. are marginalized that yeah. you know that actually plays into the hands of absolutely the bjp yeah yeah we should all stand for the marginalized the poor among muslims there is also a certain creamy layer that has broken up amongst the scheduled caste and certainly amongst the obcs yeah so these nuances we must not ignore while designing a new affirmative action policy strategy that brings greater equality and social justice economic justice in indian society so i was saying that sometimes rahul gandhi goes to the extreme the congress party has never been a party of extremes the congress party is a party that synthesizes when the positive elements of all the ideologies that is the strength of the congress party traditionally traditionally and that is the only way the congress party can go it should not try to make uh, take shortcuts with any way i think you know this is actually a matter for a separate debate <laughs> because you know uh, we are moving away from the elections and looking at larger issues and uh, i certainly agree with you that the creamy layer factor has to be factored in and also uh, that the, the the elite among the muslim communities have to be kind of uh, seen separately from the marginalized and most the elite we be, we shall certainly discuss that and i know that you are now moving to bihar and uh, you go back to maharashtra and vote on the 20th i would like to continue our conversation and look at what you have seen in bihar and how yes. we look at the maharashtra election in the next edition of item or oh, sure. session with you thank you so much yes uh let's hope yeah that the people of india from right from kerala to kashmir and from gujarat to the northeast they vote in a manner that protects democracy okay. that protects the core values of the constitution which means the diversity of india the religious diversity the linguistic diversity the caste diversity cultural diversity india is a land of diversities if this diversity is sought to be removed and only one ideology one culture one religion is sought to be imposed we will have big big problems and in that sense this election is a is a warning and the warning it is the good thing that the prime minister and uh, the bjp has sunk to these levels of falsehoods and communalization which is which which as expressed that has alerted well, the people and let's hope that the people give a good mandate sudhirji you spoke about the the serial lies of uh, the prime minister of course along with uh, his uh, deputy home minister amit shah and then he also talked about how it is being perceived on the ground but one of the things that you also mentioned in the article was that you know that uh, none of the major mainstream channels or the newspapers addressed this very big lie that has occurred and uh, a kind of uh, outlandish uh, comments that was made on the basis of that uh, but at the same time we are also seeing certain other developments in the media like for example uh, uh, a close ally of the bjp and the prime minister ztv and its founder Suvash Chandra is 
he has uh, changed his tone and that he has just become a, a kind of uh, closer or more indirect critic of uh, the Prime Minister and uh, the party. We also see certain changes in uh, another the mainstream in the South that uh, the Ashtag India Today group, which is also nuancing and then uh, which is giving more space to opposition leaders. What do you make out of all these things? See, the last 10 years have seen mm, the mainstream media becoming uh, what is now popular, popularly called the Gordi media. Completely blind, subservient. It uh, reminds me of what Lal Krishna Advaniji had said soon after the emergency was lifted. No, emergency was a time of complete uh, censorship. And most editors, as well as owners of the newspapers, were okay, therefore there were no television channels. They surrendered. After the emergency was lifted, Advaniji, as the Minister of Information and Broadcasting, and as someone who piloted most of the bills that removed the authoritarian uh, installations introduced during the emergency, he said, addressing a group of uh, media persons and media owners, well, during the emergency, remember, you were only expected to burn but we chose to crawl in you. So this time, there is no emergency. But most of the mainstream media has, has actually been crawling in front of the government. Yet, we are seeing some changes, even in the mainstream media, that to some of the examples you gave just now. But uh, I see a far greater contribution in defending media freedom and also in creating mass awareness about the main issues, this contribution is coming from the social media, especially digital platforms like yours and many others on YouTube. They are being watched extensively, even by the common people, and they are very bold. They don't hesitate to talk about uh, the the communal politics of uh, the BJP or the lies of the BJP, which is a very good thing. Now, parallelly, something uh, heartening is also happening. Very recently, we saw uh, the Supreme Court giving a verdict, releasing Prabir Purkayastha of New Street. Not only is he released, and the, the Supreme Court has said that his arrest was illegal. Right. Mm -hmm. And the whole case against News Click was so blatantly fabricated. So I tweeted, I said that the fabricated case against News Click and the arrest hmm, was only a trailer. And the Prime Minister has been saying, in the year, we have seen a trailer. picture the main picture. Now, if this was the trailer, one shudders to think what the main picture would consist of. Therefore, it was a good thing that even the Supreme Court is showing some independence and giving hope to the people that the highest court will stand by democracy, will stand for the values of the Constitution. Supreme Court gave a wonderful judgment in the electoral bonds case all of us know that uh, yet another constitutional authority, that's the Election Commission, has been the most partisan election commission in the history of elections yeah. in India. Yeah. But the Supreme Court is one pip on popes that the Supreme Court will, will start giving more and more good decisions, just decisions, fair decisions, and will hold the government to account. And similarly, the media, even the mainstream media, looking at what is the, the undercurrents in this election, will gain at least some courage to show the truth to the people. And I'm absolutely certain that whatever be the outcome of this election, even if Narendra Modi becomes Prime Minister again, he will not be able to govern India the way he has done in the last 10 years. Okay. Right, thank you. Right.